You've always been able to customize breakpoints in automatic CSS, but version 2.4 actually gives you the ability to add two new additional breakpoints to your workflow. These are completely optional breakpoints. You don't have to enable them, but if you happen to be working on a project where the website width is gonna be larger than normal, for example, I'm working on a project where the website width is 1600 pixels. Some people like to work on projects where the website width is 1920 pixels. Having these additional breakpoints are invaluable because they alleviate gaps in your ability to control the layout flow on various devices. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you how to activate these new optional breakpoints, how to change their values, and how to set up a page builder like Bricks to work with these new breakpoints. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. The first thing you need to do is in Bricks settings under general, you need to activate the custom breakpoints feature. This is gonna allow you to customize your breakpoint values. It's also gonna allow you to add additional breakpoints. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into automatic CSS, go to the dashboard under viewport, and I'm just gonna reset this to the default real quick. And you're gonna see that the default website width is 1,280 pixels. I'm also gonna turn off these additional breakpoints. So this is basically the default that you would have right here. Your website width of 1,280, your XL breakpoint at 1,280, your L breakpoint at 992, your M breakpoint at 768, and your S breakpoint at 480. This all works perfectly fine if your website width is going to be 1,280. I actually prefer to design at 1366. And so these breakpoints are still fine for a website at 1366. There are no large gaps between our breakpoints. However, if I bump this up to something like 1600, you can see the gap between 1280 and 1600 is quite large. And you may want additional controls between those two numbers. In these cases, you would want to turn on the additional breakpoint of XXL. And that's one, as soon as I click this little toggle, it's going to activate this XXL breakpoint right here, which has a default of 1440. As you can see, if I'm de designing at 1600, 1440 is a good in-between value between 1280 and 1600. So this new value will, will work by default just fine. Uh, but if I want to change this, if I wanted this to be 1366, or uh, it could be whatever you want, right? That's the point. So you can customize these values. You can add the additional breakpoint. See, I can leave the excess breakpoint off, or I can decide to turn it on if I want even more granular control. And once I turn this bottom breakpoint on, XS, uh, I can then maneuver these breakpoint values to whatever I want them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save changes here. And you're gonna see that this is all set up. I'm gonna go into the builder now. And because I have turned on custom breakpoints in Bricks, I will have these three dots right here next to the breakpoints that you typically see up top. I'm gonna to click those three dots and how you set up this panel is extremely important. And if you don't follow the step-by-step -step instructions, you can absolutely break your website. So what I would highly recommend you do is check out our documentation on mapping breakpoints in Bricks Builder. You scroll down and there's two different scenarios. If you're just gonna use standard breakpoints, here's what you should do. If you're gonna use the additional breakpoints, here's what you should do. And just follow the steps exactly. I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate it here for you. First thing to understand is that your base breakpoint in Bricks Builder should be equal to your website width. So I'm going to put in 1600 as my website width and hit save. So this one is done. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to rename the tablet portrait layout to L, okay? So L is the standard. Remember, this is L, M, and S. But these names, I feel, uh, are, are a little bit confusing, right? Especially once you've customized the values. Uh, and so you see in the ACSS dashboard, we use simple labels, L, M, and S, and XS, and XXL. Remember, this was the default, this was the default, this was the default, this was the default, and this was a default. So this one, Tablet Portrait, is actually the L breakpoint. And it needs to be one pixel less than what I have my L breakpoint. So this is 992. In Bricks, I need it to be 991. I'm going to hit update. And now you see L at 991. So that is perfectly fine. I'm going to do this one, which is going to be M. And it needs to be one pixel less. This is 768. 
I need to be 767. It's that way by default. I'm gonna go ahead and hit update there. I'm also gonna change, by the way, this desktop. I'm gonna change the icon to actually be a desktop icon. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And then on the very last breakpoint, I'm gonna go ahead and hit S. So this is gonna be the S breakpoint. 480 is my default in automatic CSS. And this is actually off. This needs to be 479. And I'm gonna hit update there. Now my breakpoints are set up perfect and I'm ready to add my XXL and my XS. But because of the way that bricks and breakpoints work, when I activate the XXL breakpoint, I actually need to add two new breakpoints inside of bricks. So I'm going to add my XL breakpoint first. So that label is gonna be XL. I'm gonna get the XL value that is 1280. So this needs to be 1279. And I am going to make sure that that is a laptop icon. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. So now I have a custom breakpoint called XL at 1279. This matches the XL breakpoint at 1280 that I have set in automatic CSS. And now what I need to do is add this XXL breakpoint at 1439. So I'm gonna hit another one. This is gonna be XXL at 1439. This can be another desktop one. I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. So now you see I have my base breakpoint, which is basically my website width. And then I have the XXL, which is set at 1439, the XL, which is set at 1279. And then I need to add one for the XS at uh, 359. So I'm gonna go add another breakpoint. This is gonna be named XS, 359 is the breakpoint. I'm gonna use the, the very last icon over here. And now I have set up my breakpoints properly inside of Bricks Builder, and I am free to go through and just see if all of them are accurate. And then of course, all of our classes are mapped to the new breakpoints inside of Bricks. So if you're using grid classes, for example, you'll have new grid XXL classes when the XXL breakpoint is active, you'll have new grid XS breakpoints. So all of these map perfectly to every other part of, the, of uh, automatic CSS. And it's just important to know this base breakpoint is where you possibly defined styles on elements, uh, on classes or at the ID level in Bricks Builder, those styles will now still be attached to this breakpoint here, which means no part of your website will be broken. If you reassign the base breakpoint to somewhere else, then that can break your website. So you never wanna reassign the base breakpoint to another breakpoint. You always wanna keep the base breakpoint as the base breakpoint, but simply change its value to whatever your website width is. Again, I would highly recommend you consult our detailed documentation on how to set all of this up if you're gonna be using these new added breakpoints, but this gives you a lot of additional workflow control, uh, much more granular control over your design and layout at various breakpoints for various devices. That's it for this video. I'll be back very soon with more awesome automatic CSS features. Cheers.